We're all going to die in a big freeze when this gigantic bubble gets bigger and bigger and bigger. <laughs> we can photograph the electromagnetic shock wave, the explosion. They're gorgeous photographs. They're on NASA.gov, on the website of mm -hmm. NASA. But that picture of the Big Bang is from 300,000 years after creation, when atoms begin to condense. We want to get it at the instant right. of creation itself. And we want to s actually photograph the universe coming out of the womb. Wow. And maybe there's an umbilical cord connecting us to a parent brain, another universe. Imagine a world where everything you know, everything you see, and everything you could possibly imagine came from nothing. Today, we delve into a question that has puzzled scientists and philosophers alike. If the universe formed from nothing, who created the nothing? The Big Bang Theory is the most widely accepted explanation for the beginning of the universe. It suggests that all life, all matter, all space and time sprang from an infinitesimally small, incredibly dense point of energy. But what was there before the Big Bang? Most scientists say nothing. This singularity, as it's called, didn't exist in space. Instead, it initiated the explosion, expansion, and subsequent cooling of space-time itself. It was a point of unimaginable density and heat, and it existed in nothing. But what does nothing really mean? In our everyday lives, nothing is just the absence of something. But in the context of the universe, nothing is a concept that's hard to grasp. It's not just empty space, because even empty space is something. It's a complete absence of matter, energy, space, and even time. But how can something come from nothing? This question has puzzled scientists for decades. Some suggest that the answer lies in the concept of a cyclical universe, where the death of one universe leads to the birth of another. This idea, known as the oscillating universe theory, suggests that our universe is just one of many, in a never-ending cycle of expansion and contraction. Each universe begins with a Big Bang, expands for billions of years, then contracts back into a singularity, sparking another Big Bang. We physicists believe that our universe is like a soap bubble. Mm -hmm. We live on the skin of the soap bubble. We're like flies trapped on flypaper. We can't get off our soap bubble. Mm -hmm. But it's expanding. In fact, it's actually accelerating. We can mm -hmm. actually see the end. Imagine a universe so old that all its stars have died out, its galaxies have drifted apart, and even its black holes have evaporated. This universe, cold and empty, might be the perfect environment for another Big Bang. But what triggers this new Big Bang? Some theories suggest that it's the result of quantum fluctuations, tiny changes in the energy of the universe that can lead to the creation of new particles. These particles could then trigger a new Big Bang, starting the cycle all over again. And so, the cycle continues, from nothing to everything and back to nothing again. This is the idea behind the theory of conformal cyclic cosmology, proposed by Nobel Prize-winning physicist Roger Penrose. But even this theory doesn't answer the ultimate question. Where did the first universe come from? How did the cycle start? Was there a divine being that kick-started the process? Or is there another explanation that we haven't discovered yet? Some scientists turn to the theory of quantum mechanics for answers. According to this theory, the universe could have formed from a quantum fluctuation in the vacuum of empty space. This fluctuation could have created a tiny bubble of space-time that expanded to form our universe. Quantum mechanics, a branch of physics that deals with the smallest particles in the universe, suggests that nothing is a bubbling, boiling soup of virtual particles that pop in and out of existence in a fraction of a second. These particles, though fleeting, could have given rise to the universe as we know it now. As we continue to probe the depths of the universe, we're constantly discovering new things. We're learning more about the nature of matter, the behavior of energy, and the fabric of space-time. And with each new discovery, we're getting closer to understanding where we came from and where we're going. There's another theory that's been gaining traction in recent years, the multiverse theory. This theory suggests that our universe is just one of many, existing in a vast multiverse. Each universe could have its own laws of physics, its own matter, and its own space-time. Imagine a vast cosmic landscape filled with an infinite number of universes. Some of these universes might be similar to ours, with galaxies, stars, and planets. Others might be completely different, with unfamiliar forms of matter and energy. According to the multiverse theory, New universes could be born all the time. 
They might form in the vacuum of space, in black holes, or in other universes. Each new universe could start with its own Big Bang, creating a new cycle of expansion and contraction. Some theories even suggest that our universe could be inside a black hole in another universe. This would mean that every black hole in our universe could be a gateway to another universe. But if there are multiple universes, does that mean there are multiple nothings? Could each universe have its own version of nothing, separate from the nothing of other universes? The multiverse theory raises more questions than it answers, but it's a fascinating idea that expands our understanding of the universe. That was all for today's exploration. Don't forget to subscribe for more captivating discoveries. Until next time, keep wondering, keep questioning, and keep exploring.